All right, so continue this. Uh, this is the, my first day of my new life. And uh, I had been saying for a long, long time, and then I got cut off because the phone rang. So for a long, 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 long time, for years, I had been hearing about Jerry Armstrong and, of course, Scientology, the Church of Scientology side of how evil he was, da 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 which is packed with lies, but I didn't know it at the time. But I knew it now just from meeting these other people. You know, it was like... You know, what else, right? Okay, so Jesse and I go to have lunch on the causeway, and we're sitting there. Now, again, I don't know anything about Ursula. I don't know anything about Osa screaming at her, any of that, right? The people on the Internet are all saying, don't trust Tori. She's an undercover agent because nobody wakes up that fast. They don't know that I've been waking up for 10 years, right? Okay, so I'm having lunch with Jesse, and in comes Jerry Armstrong. And I'm like, wow, it's Jerry Armstrong. I mean, it's just like amazing. These are all these people that, you know, all my life I couldn't talk to them. They were suppressive, blah, 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 you know, and now I'm getting to meet him in person, right? So I get up and I give him a big hug. And he's pretty cold at the time. You know, he's not like real warm towards me, but whatever. Okay. So we sit down and he keeps talking about the, what happened to them and they did this and they did that. And I'm like, remember, Stacy hasn't told me anything about Ursula. So I know nothing about that whole experience. Jerry has just come from the airport and is very upset about the Office of Special Affairs, rightfully so, screaming at Ursula that she's a Nazi and all this other stuff, right? And remember, the critics online have been saying, I'm really with Osa, right? So he's like, we, they, or they, this, they, that, they're doing this, they did that. And I finally look at him and I say, now we're out on the causeway, right? There's water on both sides of this causeway. It's just a little causeway from the Tampa airport over to Clearwater. With, you know, trucks and cars and things going along, right? And we're at the restaurant. And I say to him, Jerry, you know, who are you talking about as far as they? And he looks at me and he goes, the office of special affairs, you. And that's just it. I just hit the ceiling. It's like, I have heard, I've read these critics saying, I'm Osa, I'm an undercover agent, all this other bullshit, but that's it. And I just literally burst out crying. I get up, I run out of the restaurant. I am literally, truthfully and honestly, I was going to stick my thumb out grabbed the first truck I could get, and I was out of there. I don't know where I was going. I don't know what I was doing, but I was done with these people calling me the Office of Special Affairs when I was not. And I was like, fuck this. You know, I'm going. And I go running out the door. I'm literally going to catch a truck. That's it. And I'm on my way. And luckily, thank God, Jesse comes running after me, grabs me, hugs me, says story, and I'm just like hysterical, going, I can't Take it, Jesse. This is too much. And he's like, okay, we're going to go back to the hotel. Let me just help you. We'll calm down on this. And we go back to the hotel. And I, I don't even remember what all happens. But we basically just talk. And, you know, he still doesn't tell me about Ursula because they know that's too much for me to take. So he's just like, don't worry about it. You know, he whatever people are going to say what they're going to say, just move along with it. And uh, we'll help you through it. So that's that day. The next day, Stacy and Bob take me to Stacy's and Bob's house in Clearwater, right? So now we move out of the hotel. Me again, not knowing anything about Ursula. They put me up in Stacy's guest room. Bob hands me a laptop. And he says, Tori, start telling your story. Just keep talking. So I sit back and I'm like, Okay, what do I tell these people? You know, they're all screaming, I'm Osa, blah, blah, blah. And I and I think, what's the number one thing they need to know about me? And so I write Magoo's Worst Nightmare. Now remember, it, actually you people probably don't even know it, but in the Church of Scientology, I used to always say there's five people I can say I have epilepsy to without getting these real dirty looks and you're... PTS and you're one one and you're this and that and all these evaluations that would just roll along in their heads just from hearing the word epilepsy right so I rarely talked about it so now I write Magoo's worst nightmare 
And I write this whole thing about how, what happened to me in the church, how I, I was ordered off my medication, had the grand mal seizures, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, everything I've told you guys. I write it up and I hit send. And I'm just waiting to see what happens. And sure enough, somebody anonymously, no doubt Yachty or one of his buddies, comes on there and says, Dear McGrew, do you honestly think if we had a ship and we could take 21 people that we would take someone with such a pathetic condition as you have on our ship. And I can't remember all that they said, but it was really gross. And I just sat back and went, bing, go. Because I knew the critics were smart enough to be able to see how sick this was. And I knew they could communicate. And I knew they would. And sure enough, man, they just rolled on it. And it was such a win for me. It was like, yes, you know, somebody finally kicking these people's ass besides me, right? Somebody sticking up for me. Somebody sticking up for my rights, right? It was just like, ah, oh, yes. And I just continued writing from then on. And as people would learn a little bit more about me, they would come onto my side, you know, realizing that's not true. She's not an Osaf. And there are still people that did. There are still people to this day who no doubt think I'm really an undercover secret agent. And if you think I am with 30, 350 plus videos, you personally are insane. That's all I'm going to say. But anyway, they, you know, it's like it went on and on and on and on and on. But a lot of people definitely helped me. And some wonderful people. I'm just going to tell you this and I'll end off. But these people, I swear to God, I always say you never know what you might say or do that could help someone. And remember, in the beginning, most of the people were against me. I had, so now I had Andreas, Stacy, Bob, and Jesse, Mark. Those were my friends. That was pretty much it. And a lot of these critics online were still kind of hashing it out, right? These people from Seattle, and if you ever hear this, I hope you do. I cannot thank you enough. They started emailing me saying, Dear Magoo, we don't, we're not ex-Scientologists. We're not critics. In fact, we don't know anything about Scientology. But we watched your escape across the country. And we are so proud of you. Please keep telling your story. We get to come into our office every day to find out what happened to Magoo. It was just so great. It was just such a wonderful thing. Every day they would write me little sweet messages. It meant so much to me. It really did. Everyone who helped me, oh, you, I, I, there's, there aren't words to say thank you enough to everyone. From Stacy, Bob, Jesse, Mark, all the different people online who helped me, thank you so much. And then tons of other people in the future, which I'll tell you about eventually. But it it really, really was a fantastic transformation. And that's why I read I read that quote at my last party about the butterfly. You know, because it turns from a cocoon into a butter when it thought it was at the end, it turns into a butterfly. And there you go. And that's exactly how I felt. I was free. Finally. So there you go. And one last thing is that somebody way up in the church wrote me. And said, Dear Magoo, I used to be way up in the church. I can't tell you who I am, but keep posting. Because the whole world is watching what's happened to you as far as Scientology. And as long as you keep telling your story, they're not going to hurt you. Because so many eyes are on you. And to that person, thank you also. Because that definitely helped me. To everybody, I love you. I hope this has really been an experience and you've enjoyed it. And you've it's helped you see my own transformation and and all the details of it. I love you. Keep speaking out. Keep exposing the abuses of the Church of Scientology and enjoy your life. Have fun and peace out. I love you. Bye-bye.